Pastor Jim yesterday at Flatirons at the tail end had this graphic. Okay, if I go to their page here. Okay, now we're talking. Now we're freaking talking. Um, 20 hours ago. Okay, so I'm going to go here. I actually found it. Okay, um, can you believe that? That's it right there. That's the screen I want. All right. This is what I remembered from yesterday. As, as I was thinking about what I read in the Bible and what I got out of it here, this is what I was thinking yesterday. God's grace is greater than my disgrace. God's love is greater than my hatred. God's forgiveness is greater than my anger. God's acceptance is greater than my shame. God's faithfulness is greater than my failure. Well, what I read in the Revelation, okay, this is a Christian church, presumably based off of the New Testament, which is what I was reading out of yesterday. This is the God I want to believe in right here, okay? That is precisely the God that I personally want to believe in. And it, it's just, what he's saying here is in such profound contrast to this angry, vengeful God. Um, God is back in the Revelation chapter in the New Testament, just laying waste to humanity. And so... There's even part in Revelations where it says something along the lines of um, God wipes your tears away. And so this is the way I've imagined heaven, okay? It's like, how can you go to heaven and be happy? Let's say, oh, well, I'm in heaven. I'm supposed to be happy. But my relatives are all going to hell because of the choices they made. So how could I be in heaven and happy about that? Well, somehow... God's going to have to sift out and dilute out a whole part of my memory or my soul or something so that I'm not despairing in heaven forever while you torture my loved ones. And so th these are contradictions and they're things to me that don't make sense philosophically. And so how could you be happy in heaven if God is laying waste to everyone you love? And pres I just can't imagine that everyone is so bad that they deserve to be laid to waste and tortured by God. And that, that idea of God torturing is in complete contradiction with what is being said here. Okay, I, would, I mean, like, I'm not criticizing Jim at all. This, what you're pointing out here, this is the God that I want to believe in. And that's also why given the fact that it's in such grave contradiction with what I read in the Bible, I have trouble accepting what I'm reading in the Bible. So how am I not supposed to be a thinker and have that? Am I sinning because I'm having this thought that I want this Christ-like vision, this Christly bridge to God that manifests itself um, with this kind of God I'm reading about on the screen here? Am I sinning because I'm like having this idea that I want to take what I want to take from the Bible and I, I think that there are certain aspects of morality and God's law you can't pick a la carte. But the story of God in the Bible sounds more to me like hypocritical, controlling human beings have come up with this concoction, this idea of God that serves their nature and wicked desire to want to control and rule over people as opposed to a, a righteous God like that's on the screen here that I can get behind and like um, worship and get on my knees and worship and appreciate. You know what I mean? This is the ideal, idyllic God that I like here. But where is God uh, other than the idea in the first parts of the, like most of the New Testament, where is this God in the rest of the Bible, Old Testament, and, and the nightmare that is the Revelation chapter at the tail end? Where is this God? So that's what I wanted to point out today, okay? This video could very well be um, decent enough to post online. Someone might appreciate my take on it. So um, I kind of expressed what I wanted to express about this which makes me sort of want to just end this video because I spoke about this topic. I got out what I was feeling, but I, I also, 
I cannot underestimate the consternation that I was feeling after reading 10 or so pages of Revelation before going to Flatiron yesterday, how it was impacting the way I was feeling the whole time that I was there and undermining what was really, in essence, a good message from Jim yesterday by um, making me feel anger. I felt angry there. I was just... I mean, I'm staring out at the crowd and I'm having these thoughts of, are all these people just brainwashed people? And I'm having these doubts about faith. And um, (laughs) then a lady who sat next to me smelled like a dirty hamster. (laughs) That doesn't even fit with uh, everything else I said in here. But um, she did. She smelled like unbathed and uh, didn't seem very groomed or classy or anything, but that's fine. I love her as my fellow human being. Hamster smell lady. Um, Yeah, so that's it, people. I'm going to wrap this up because I just wanted to express those thoughts. I wanted these thoughts on record because it was was like a stalwart philosophical punch in the gut yesterday. It felt like a a major cognitive beat down on me because of the way I interpret the world and the way this scripture scripture of the revelation chapter hit me. I don't even like it. Um, you know, torture and death and blood and, and like all this theater, what am I supposed to take from it? And so that's what I was saying last night in my prayer before I went to bed. Let me end like this, that when I was praying, I was like, um, I was thinking about and referring to this screenshot with Jim. Like, this is the God that I want to believe in, God, and it's not that angry beast that I read about in the Bible who who subjects people to all... Like, I don't know. The concept of faith. How much of what I'm thinking about all of this is... um, my confusion over a lifetime in a society where it's based on Judeo-Christian values. I grew up as a Catholic. All these things really can't be discounted. And I had fear as a child, as a Catholic boy, of going to hell all the time. And that's the... that. So you don't get the hell message when you go to Flatirons. They focus more on these positive and lighthearted things. But when you grow up Catholic... There's a lot of, you will go to hell for this, you will go to hell for that talk. What's hell? Oh yeah, you're just basically tortured horribly in fire forever. So that that idea of God is in in stark contrast to this uh, proposition of God. I'm looking for answers because I'm a truth seeker and I want it to be a healthy a healthy relationship that I have with God and my faith, not one that brings me down and frustrates me because of the presence of absurd contradictions. And so I can only do this by going through it all myself and thinking about it um, in depth, really thinking about things in depth. So that's it for now. Um, I'll, I'll probably be back. If you see this, I'll probably be back with other videos talking about other things, but that is what was on my mind today. So thank you very much. Take care. Peace.